Good morning and a very warm welcome to today's reflection on John 11 verses 30 to 51. My name's Vicky, I'm a reader at Holy Trinity and I will begin by reading the passage. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out they followed her supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you'd been there, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more, movedly, de deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grey clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who came to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him, but some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing? they asked. Here is the man performing here is this man performing many signs. If we let him go on, if we let him go on like this, everyone will, will believe in him, and then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Then one of them, named Cephas, who was high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realise that it is better for you that one man die for the people than the, ho than the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. We are three quarters of the way through Jesus 100 now, so hopefully you are well on your way to finding, following and becoming like Jesus. Today we've heard quite a long reading with an enormous amount of content that we could reflect on. But today I want to reflect on two phrases that popped out at me. The first is Jesus wept, and the second is what are we accomplishing? Jesus wept is the shortest verse in the Bible, but it says so much about Jesus, his humanity and his love for his friends. Mary, Martha and Lazarus are not described as disciples in the, in the Gospels, but dear friends of Jesus. It's not surprising then that Jesus wept when he saw how sad and that Mary and Martha were at the death of their brother. He felt their pain and sorrow too. Although he knew that Lazarus would live again, the pain of, the, of death had already been inflicted on his dear friends. I think it's good to see that Jesus has all the emotional sadness of grief that we experience. When I conduct funerals, I have often included a reference to this verse, Jesus wept, as I think it's helpful that people know that Jesus understands our pain when we lose a loved one. The talk of eternal life is obviously very comforting, but it does not negate the loss of a loved one here and now. The fact is that Jesus could have prevented <coughs> excuse me, Lazarus from dying, but both Martha and Mary knew that knew that and they told him so but Jesus needed Lazarus's death and resurrection to publicly prove his power and connection to God. Ironically it is raising Lazarus from the dead that also condemns Jesus to death. The chief priests and Pharisees 
just couldn't cope with what was happening. They were faced with a Messiah they longed for, but who wasn't what they wanted or expected. They called a meeting and they asked, what are we accomplishing? Hmm. For years and years, the religious leaders have ruled with rules. They have not shown mercy or compassion. They have shunned and condemned. In short, they have not looked after the people of God. They have not looked after after anybody bar themselves. So what have they accomplished? Not much. Along comes Jesus and changes everything and accomplishes so much. He raises the dead, he heals the sick, he brings good news for the poor and the marginalised. He offers a very different way of living. But rather than following Jesus, the religious leaders are afraid that the Romans will hear what's going on and will tear down their precious temple and take charge of their lives. Jesus was not the kind of Messiah they wanted, so he had to go. But Jesus, who they condemned to death, accomplishes even more by dying. Jesus' life shows us how to live, and Jesus' death shows us that death is not the end, but the beginning of an eternal life with our Father in heaven. And even Cephas gets it, even though he, perhaps he doesn't. He certainly says these words, you do not realise that it is better for you that one man die for the people than the whole nation perish. Yes, Jesus had to die, but he didn't die to preserve the temple or the life of the Pharisees and the scribes. He died to save us from our sins. And that was part of God's plan all along. His death and resurrection changed everything for all time. Now, Robin Gamble, in his book, Jesus 100, raises the question, who wants to live forever? Now, I don't think I do, not here on earth at any rate. I can feel myself ageing and I know that there will be a point when either my body or mind or both will be worn out and it will be time to go back to my maker. But it's in our heavenly home that we find eternal life with God, that we will live forever in a home that has many rooms, one for each of us that believes and trusts in Jesus Christ, a home where we belong, a home where we are restored and vital once more. But it's not time for that yet. There are things to accomplish here on earth. It's time to find Jesus. It's time to follow him. It's time to become more like him. And it's time to make a difference here and now, to comfort those who weep, to weep with them, to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to live according to his will and his way. Amen. So I hope you uh, have a great day and um, may you be blessed um, and uh, I will see you soon. Bye bye.